made it to October of 2021 and for that we are grateful. This morning we just want to take a few moments and remember those that we have lost to breast cancer and we want to honor those that are still here. We say praise God that you made it and you are a survivor. We thank God for you this morning. Come on, wherever you are, can you put your hands together? We came to lift his great name because it's nobody like him. Hallelujah. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Come on, say, Lord, I live. Come on, put it in the comments. Lord, I lift your name. It's nobody like you. We lift you up. Let's sing it again. Say, Lord, I lift. going on in the world, I wanted to get your attention. We need to pay attention to our bodies, especially when it comes to breast cancer awareness. Olivet family, we are celebrating breast cancer survivors, caregivers, and their prayer warriors. I am happy to be standing here today celebrating my 10th year of being cancer free. 
Thank you so much for your continued prayers and your support. Today I will share information on breakthroughs in prevention and treatments for breast cancer. The National Cancer Institute researchers are working to advance our understanding of how to prevent, detect, and treat breast cancer. They are also looking at how to address disparities and improve quality of life for survivors of the disease. Breast cancer is one of the few cancers for which an effective screening test like mammogram is available. The use of MRIs, ultrasounds, clinical breast exams are also used to help detect breast cancer, but not as a routine screening tool. One new technology is 3D mammography. This procedure takes images from different angles around the breast and builds them into a 3D-like image. This technology is becoming increasingly available in cancer clinics. The concerns in breast cancer screening, as in all cancer screenings, are the potential for diagnosing tumors that will not become life-threatening. Hallelujah. For example, there is a study called WISDOM, which means women informed to screen depending on measures of risk. It is a study that aims to determine if risk-based screening, that is screening at intervals that are based on each woman's risk as determined by her genetic makeup, family history, and other risks. The mainstays of breast cancer treatment are surgery, radiation, chemotherapy, hormone therapy, and targeted therapy. But scientists continue to study novel treatments and drugs along with new combinations of existing treatments. Triple negative breast cancers are the hardest to treat because they lack hormone receptors and so they do not respond to therapies directed at these targets. Therefore, chemotherapy is the mainstay treatment for triple negative breast cancer. In fact, I decided to change my oncologist this past January. For the first time, I was told by my new oncologist that I had triple negative breast cancer nine years ago. I'll bet the fact that I made a complete recovery is an awesome miracle. I thank you again for your prayers. The development of new therapies, technologies, and studies to better understand tumor resistance, diagnosis, prognosis, screening, and prevention treatments of breast cancer. The National Cancer Institute has another project called the Confidence Project which is a division of cancer epidemiology and genetics, which will develop a research resource that includes data from thousands of breast cancer patients and controls of different races and ethnic backgrounds. This resource will be used to identify genes that are associated with breast cancer risk, prognosis, stereotypes, response to treatment, and second breast cancers. Breast cancer genetic study in African ancestry populations, the genes of black women with, with and without breast cancer will be compared to each other as well as those of white women who have had breast cancer. Olivet, don't forget the principles of cancer prevention. Eat whole grains, plenty of fruits and vegetables, lean meats and fish, don't forget your alkaline water, make sure you're exercise, walking, dancing, playing, hiking, and swimming. Your best line of defense would be to get an annual checkup. Contact the American Cancer Society or Susan G. Komen or Sisters by Choice if you have concerns about insurance or need care. Every woman over 50 should have a mammogram unless cancer runs in the family and she may have to have it younger. For my guys, if you have a pimple or some type of liquid coming out of your nipple, you need to definitely get that checked as soon as possible. Don't forget to squeegee down your chest to make sure that you feel lumps that might be appearing in your breast. If you need further information, please call the church office and they will get in touch with me. So, until we speak again, I send you love from up above. God bless you. Hello, I'm Morgan. Welcome. There's something special going on at the Olivet Church where our mission is to know Christ and to make him known. 
Over the past 30 years, we have prepared believers to serve a growing community through outreach programs, mission ministries, praise and worship, and visionary leadership. Here at the Olivet Church, as we virtually worship, we strive to make a service where worshipers will have a life-changing experience with God. Join the Olivet Church virtually on Facebook Live for our praise and worship experience. We stream live at 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. We're excited to announce our upcoming events. Backs up, Olivet. Protect yourself, your family, and your community. Free COVID-19 vaccines will be available, both Moderna and Pfizer, Thursday, October 21st, 2021, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Register online at lagrangevax.correspondence.org. And don't forget to share VaxUpOlivet using the hashtag VaxUpOlivet. Our very own Dr. William Holmes Robinson will be celebrating his 47th birthday and his beloved daughter, Kaylin, will celebrate her 12th birthday on October 31st. Listen up. Olivet family, it's that time again. It's birthday time in Fayetteville celebrating another year of life for our pastor, the Reverend Dr. William Holmes Robinson, on Sunday, October 31st at 8 a.m., and again at 11 a.m. Join me in thanking God that he has blessed Pastor Robinson with 47 years as he touches lives across the country, around the world, but most of all, especially here at the Olivet Church. Our pastor is truly a gift from the Lord. He is an expression of God's love. Olivet, God gave Pastor Robinson a gift on his birthday, his beloved daughter, Kaylin. Happy birthday, Kaylin. Happy 12th birthday. So family, let's bless the blessings God has placed in our path to lead us to him. No gift is too small because indeed, it's the thought that counts. You can send your expressions of your birthday love to Pastor Robinson by Cash App with dollar sign Dr. William H. Robinson or Zell at rwhrobinson at aol.com or mail checks care of the Olivet Church, P.O. Box 143298, Fayetteville, Georgia 30214. And thank you in advance for your generosity as we celebrate the set man of our house, Pastor William Holmes Robinson. For additional information, please visit our website at theolivetchurch.org. To become a member, to submit prayer requests and praise reports, find information on Bible study and Sunday school times for both children and adults. You can sign up for our weekly newsletter, download the Olivet app, and order all of your Olivet merchandise. Like us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash the Olivet Church. You can follow us on Twitter at the Olivet Church and watch us on YouTube at the Olivet Church dash ATL. We pray for our Heavenly Father to be with you daily. This is Olivet. Make today awesome. We were
a few moments a layover in the wilderness a layover in the wilderness I think it's safe to say that most of us in here right now have probably made a stop in the wilderness maybe you didn't know that you were there but more than likely, chances are you have had a layover in the wilderness. And the wilderness is the place after your bondage, but right before your promised land. It's that in-between place. It's the place right after your captivity, but right before your destiny. It's that place after the bad habit, but right before your new life. It's that place after you have sown some good seeds, but right before you reap the harvest. It's called wilderness moments. As a matter of fact, I think some of us are there right now. Meaning we're out of Egypt, which represents our worst nightmare but not yet in Canaan, the place where our dreams take us. For example, we're no longer working the job that we hate, but we still don't have the job that we want either. We're close, but we're still not quite there just yet. Another way to say it is we're out of bondage, meaning the addiction has been broken, the bad marriage, is over, the bills have been caught up, the wrong people are out of our lives, the surgery was successful, the pain has subsided, the children have finally graduated and moved out of your house, the retirement has come, the days of abuse are behind us. But the question is this morning, why do we still feel like something is missing? Well, i tell you what it is. It's because although the addiction has been broken, the healing is still in process. Although the bad marriage is over, the pain still lingers. Although the bills have been caught up, you still can't buy exactly what you want either. Although the surgery went well, the scars still remain. Although the children have graduated, they still don't have a job yet. <laughs> Although retirement has come, you still have not achieved some of your personal goals. Although the days of abuse are over, trusting people is still hard for you to do. And although you've sown some good seeds, you're still waiting to reap your blessing. That's what's missing. In other words, you're out of Egypt, but now you have to deal with the layover <laughs> in the wilderness. And I want you to understand this morning that what caused the people of Israel to second guess their deliverance was the fact that it's difficult to be patient when you know that where you are is not where you want to be, although you're better off than you used to be. <laughs> and by talking to somebody right now, see, watch this. I'm glad that I'm not in Egypt anymore. But I'm still not satisfied because I also recognize that I'm not in the land of promise either. Because after all, this is not what I prayed for. Yes, I prayed to be free, but I also prayed for my feet to strike Canaan. In other words, I didn't pray to be chased down in the desert my entire life. See, I understand. I know I got to go through the desert, but I'm not trying to stay in the desert. <laughs> 
I think David said it best when David said, yea, though I walk through the valley. And the operative word there is through. In other words, David was saying in essence, listen, don't send me any mail to this address. Because by the time it gets here, I'll be gone because I'm just passing through. I'm just trying to make my way through. And I believe that's the word for somebody on this Sunday morning. And listen, you don't have to be a road scholar to know if you keep on walking through, you're going to come out on the other side. And the sad reality is a lot of us are making permanent dwelling places in the desert. A lot of us are getting comfortable with desert living. See, I really want you to grasp the tension in this text and in the heart of God's chosen people that they're saying, listen, God, we, we really wanted to be free, but now we didn't want to have to face another mountain. <laughs> see, see, understand the children of Israel at the time of our text, they are fresh out of bondage. And they are thinking in their minds that in just a few days they will be in the land of milk and honey only to find out that they are living in the wilderness. So, so the Israelites, they, they raised the issue, they raised the question, they said, God, if you wanted to kill us, why didn't you just kill us back in Egypt? <laughs> why, why, why did you bring us this far to leave us now? In other words, why did you commend our faithfulness by releasing us from our chains only to reward us with more chains? In other words, they're saying, why did you bring us way out here only to make us wait in the desert in the wilderness? But, but, but all of that, the children of Israel did not know that when they raised this whole issue with God, that they were really answering their own question. Because the reality is, if God wanted them dead, they would have died a long time ago. So obviously, God had more for them to do. And I think that's the lesson that God is trying to relay to somebody on this Sunday morning. You think that just because you're in the wilderness and because you are experiencing hard times in your life right now, that God is trying to destroy you. But, but I stopped by this morning to remind you that God is not trying to destroy you, but God is trying to bless you. But, but understand, he's going to bless you by way of the wilderness. Another way to say it is you have to go through in order to get to. Look at your neighbor and say you got to go through something in order to get to your blessing. And a lot of us, we want the testimony, but we don't want to go through the test. But I stopped by to tell you it's through the test that you learn what God is trying to teach you. You got to go through the wilderness. I mean, think about it. If God wanted you dead, you would have already been dead. Can I get a witness here? So by virtue of the fact that you are still here suggests that God is trying to take you somewhere. But, but here's the lesson. Here's the lesson. You can't allow the wilderness to make you bitter. Because if you get bitter, I'm talking to somebody this morning, you're going to wander around in it for 40 years. But, but you have to allow the wilderness to make you better. But because here it is, anything that doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And that's what God was trying to do. He was trying to make the children of Israel stronger so that they could handle their promised land. That's why when the people said to Moses, they said, why did you bring us out here to die? We could have died in Egypt. <laughs> Moses said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. Verse 13. And I believe God is trying to tell somebody right now, if you can just stand still and hold on and trust me, come on somebody, I can show you something today. In other words, I can give you a word that will speak to your situation today. I can give you hope about your future today. I can give you a message for your mess and your mess ups today, but you got to stand still. Touch somebody and tell them, stand still. In other words, God says, don't get ahead of me. You just be still, and if you remain still, you'll discover that I'll open up a Red Sea for you. 
See, God has some red seas that he's trying to open up for your life, but he's waiting for you to stand still, stop trying to fight your own battle, and turn it over to him. And what that means is you got to be at peace about what God is doing to you and through you in this particular season of your life. And yes, I know it's rough out here, but be at peace. I know people are talking about you and low rating you and calling you everything but a child of God. But God sent me here today to tell you, be at peace. I know you're frustrated. I know you're agitated. I know you're irritated. But God wants you to be at peace. Look at somebody and tell them, be at peace. I say all the time that peace is the absence of anxiety. It's not the absence of trouble like many of us think it is, but rather it's the absence of anxiety in spite of the trouble. And I don't know how you feel about it on this Sunday morning, but the Bible says God will give you peace that surpasses all understanding. He said, I'll keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on me. Truth be told, I can really relate today to... To the children of Israel, if you can be honest this morning, you can too. I mean, when you think about it, the Israelites, they, they raise an issue here in this text that many of us are, are really battling with right now. And if you're not battling with it, it might be because you're still in Egypt. But for those of us, th those of us who are in transition, this is our issue as well. And, and that is, again, what do you do when your sowing has not reaped the expected harvest. But because the truth of the, mo the matter is there are moments in life when we find ourselves living between the problem and the promise. I, 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 say, I say all the time that whenever God gives you a promise, he's going to give you a problem to go along with that promise. And how well you handle that problem will determine how quickly God will make provision in your life. If God gives you a million dollar promise, you can rest assured he's going to give you a million dollar problem. Now, now let me tell you this. This is how the children of Israel handled the problem. The Bible says they murmured and complained. And it took them 40 years, come on somebody, to make a journey that some scholars say they could have made at the time of our text in 40 days. This is how Jesus handled the problem. It says while he was in the wilderness, he fasted and he prayed. And he got out of his situation in 40 days. Look at how you're looking at me. Come here class. Let me tell you what the difference is between 40 years and 40 days. The difference is your attitude. Look at your neighbor and tell him you got to have a good attitude. You have to be positive in your wilderness. You have to keep on fighting in your wilderness. You got to hold your head up high. Who am I preaching to this morning? While you're going through your wilderness, you got to keep on doing what is right in your heart in spite of the challenges that you may have to face. Tell somebody your attitude determines your altitude. I know I ain't Jesse Jackson, but that was a good little Jesse Jackson rhyme right there. Your attitude, come on, say it again, determines your altitude. If you want to go higher, if you want to move forward, if you want to go farther, you got to adjust your attitude. You can't be bitter, but you got to let the wilderness make you better. When life hands you lemons, stop frowning. Come on, somebody, stop looking all crazy. When life hands you lemons, turn it into lemonade. Not only that, but when you're living in the wilderness, secondly, you have to learn how to confront the comfort of oppression. I'm still in the text. See, I discovered, I discovered, church, that many of us have found comfort in tyranny because although it restrains us it's still familiar no, notice the text says that the Israelites would have preferred to stay in Egypt which represents oppression rather than accept Canaan the promised land which represents freedom 
In, in other words, they, they would rather be bound than to be free. And the sad reality is, Olivet, that there's a measure of comfort and security that many of us find in oppression that needs to be confronted, especially in the body of Christ. Too, too many of us, let me say this, are comfortable being in slavery. See, the reality is God has called you and I to be victorious. In other words, we have been called to be the victor and not the victim. And in order to be a victor, you cannot accept a slave mentality. You can't be comfortable with being a captive. See, see I have noticed that oppression is accepted by some because oppression brings them security. But, but watch now, it really brings about a false sense of security. In other words, the security you think you have is really not real. As a matter of fact, let, let me, you want to know why some people are mistreated and abused and walked over and stepped on and emotionally traumatized? It, it may be because they've gotten comfortable in oppression. See, for some people, oppression is easier to deal with than freedom. See, understand, oppression is granted, but freedom is going to cost you something. Oppression is received, but freedom is chosen. Oppression is given, but freedom is won. And the sad reality is the children of Israel would have rather stayed in Egypt and been oppressed than to fight for their freedom. I mean, look at how they're talking. Listen to how they're talking to their leader, Moses. L listen to the conversation. They're saying now, Pastor Moses, at least we had three meals a day back in Egypt. A at least, Pastor, we had a bed to sleep in back in Egypt. A at least in Egypt, we had water to drink, Moses. W why you want to come around here and mess up the program? And what that says to me, Olivet, what that says to me is sometimes you can have people to ride your back for so long until when they get off your back, you're still bent over. Say amen, like. See, many people are in oppressive situations, but they will stay in them because they are quote unquote needy people. Meaning they will stay in a relationship and be unhappy because there's comfort and security in oppression. If you can't say amen, say ouch. They will stay on a job and be miserable because there is comfort in oppression. But, but let me tell you something. Let, let me warn you today. Oppression can trap you. The comfort of oppression can make a fool out of you. The comfort of oppression will play games with your mind. If you don't believe me, just ask some ex-alcoholics and they would tell you that at one time in their life they would rather stay drunk than try to function clean and sober just ask some ex-cons and they would tell you that at one time they would rather stay in jail than to try to make a living and function on the outside J just ask some spouses who accept the fact that their mate is abusive but they say it's easier to stay in the relationship rather than to take the risk and not have a relationship at all if you don't believe me just ask the israelites in the text who said it's easier to be a slave than it is to take the risk of freedom a and church that, that that's where they were with Moses they were saying Moses it's easier, easier for us to stay in Egypt than it is to cross one more river it's easier for us Moses to stay oppressed than it is to have faith and then stretch out our rods but but I've come this morning to make an announcement to you Olivet and the announcement that I need to make to you this morning is Egypt is closed Look, look at your name and say Egypt is closed. Let, let me say this. Don't develop a slave mentality. Because a slave mentality will have you accepting less when you've been offered more. A slave mentality will have you thinking you can't make it without your oppressor's help. A slave mentality will have you believing that it's easier to conform than it is to fight. But sometimes, church, in this life, you've just got to fight. Do you hear me this Sunday morning? 
and I'm not talking about physically because we wrestle not against flesh and blood but I'm talking about spiritually you just can't take any and everything off the devil that there comes a time in your life where you have to stand up square your shoulders look the enemy in his face and say listen you can't have my joy you can't have my family you can't have my marriage you can't have my peace there are times when you got to stand and fight see here's the challenge for Israel in the text Israel had to confront the mindset of being comfortable in oppression and that's the challenge for many of us on this Sunday morning we, we've got to confront the mindset but because when your mind is right the devil can't trap you see when your mind is right what, what the devil sends to hurt you God will use it for your transformation when your mind is right Paul said it this way be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind in other words just like you renew your driver's license you gotta renew your mind just like you help me Holy Ghost renew your insurance every year and renew your memberships and permits you gotta renew your mind Moses said Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. In other words, Moses is saying to them, never be afraid of an enemy that's already defeated. Whoo, I feel like preaching. In other words, let him be more worried about you than you are about him. Are y'all praying with me? M meaning if you defeated your enemy once, you can defeat them again. See, see, understand today, Olivet, that, that you are where you are because you've already made it past what's after you. I think I just said something. I said you are where you are because you've already made it past what's after you. See, see understand, you, you've gotten to where you are because although the enemy tried, he couldn't stop you. Tell somebody the devil couldn't stop me. See, see, here it is. You didn't make it all the way to the shores of the promised land by default. But watch this. You made it because you can fight. And catch this. If you can't, God can. Let, let, me, let me help you here this morning. Don't be afraid of an enemy whom you've already defeated. See, you've already defeated your enemies. And what you've got to deal with now is the fear of being caught again. But because I have discovered that many of us are afraid of getting recaptured like the children of Israel. Meaning we are afraid of going back, afraid of being addicted again, afraid of being tricked again. I want you to see something here in this text. The text says, I love it, it says that when the Israelites saw the Egyptian army approach, and look at what it says, verse 10 they became, watch now, afraid. You see that? In other words, they didn't become afraid until they looked back. Y'all making me work. I mean, they were doing fine as long as they were looking forward. But when they looked back, preach Pastor Robinson, their hearts grew heavy. That they were okay as long as they were focused on moving forward. But when they look back, that's when their minds went back to how things were in Egypt. What, what, what are you saying, Pastor? This is what I'm saying. The key to moving forward into your promised land sometimes is in your ability not to look back. In other words, if you're going to move forward, you can't dwell on the past. Look, look at your neighbor and say, you can't dwell on the past. You, you know how we do it. This is how we used to do it. This is how we used to sing it. This is how we used to usher. This is how we did it at the old landmark. This is how the old administration did it. This is how great I used to be. Egypt is closed. Stop dwelling on the past. The Bible says, whosoever puts his hand to the plow and looks back ain't fit for the kingdom of God. 
Paul said, forgetting those things which are what? Behind me and reaching for those things which are what? I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling. You got to keep moving forward. That's why during slavery, I thought about it during this Independence Week. Aquanet, I thought about it during 4th of July. During slavery, Harriet Tubman, also known as, as Black Moses, she would keep a gun on her. And, and it was said that she would keep a, a pistol on her for those slaves who wanted to turn back. <laughs> Because she knew if they had turned back, it would ruin all the efforts and the hard work of the Underground Railroad. And they said every now and then Harriet Tubman would, would brandish that gun just to remind everybody, ain't no turning back. And that's all I came to tell you this Sunday morning, ain't no turning back. I don't care what we did 20 years ago. I don't care what we did 30 years ago. Ain't no turning back. I'm pressing toward the mark. Yeah. Yeah. The songwriter said it this way. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turn. The world behind me. The cross before me. Go ahead and shake somebody's hand and tell them you can't turn back can't look back I, I like to say it this way your past is like a rear view mirror in your car and your future is that windshield in front of you and the windshield in front of you is much bigger than the rear view mirror and, and I said that to say uh, what's coming is always better than what's been and what you have to do is get yourself in position and in a level of expectation for what's coming that's why I say to you every Sunday I see you in the future and you're looking much better than you're looking right now because when this day is over it's over but we gotta keep come on somebody we gotta keep striving we gotta keep pressing we gotta keep pushing tell somebody the best is yet to come but you can't get there looking back. Then lastly, when you're living in between sowing and reaping, when you're living in between Egypt and the promised land, you got to know when to watch and when to wait. M meaning there are moments, help me Holy Ghost, oh, I feel good up here. There are moments when the victory is won, not by your strength in battle, but rather by your faith in patience. Moses told the people, stand still and see. See, some of us, we would have missed it right there because we move around too much. We're too busy. Some of us are just busy bodies, but I came here to tell you, if you're going to see a breakthrough, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. In other words, Moses was saying, just be patient. Moses was saying, if you can stand still, the Egyptians you see today, you will never see again because the Lord will fight for you. And that's the lesson for somebody. You trying to get people back. You trying to pay people back. You trying to fight your own battle. You need to be still and let the Lord fight your battle because he knows how to get your enemy. Are y'all praying with me? You don't have to cuss them out. You don't have to give them a piece of your mind. I tell you all the time, some of you, you're going to give up all of your pieces and you're going to have no mind left. You got to turn it over to the Lord and let the Lord fight your battle. Go ahead and tell somebody, let the Lord fight your battle. All you have to do is be still and be patient. Isaiah said it this way, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. That re renew means rejuvenation. They shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. Not only is there rejuvenation, but that's elevation. And then he says, they shall run and not get weary. That's acceleration. And then he says, they shall walk and not faint. That's duration. In other words, you got to wait on the Lord. 
good things come to those who wait. A couple went to the a, a couple went to the airport one one morning to catch their flight, and when they when they arrived at the gate, y'all, they were told by an agent to just wait to board. So they made their way to a spot in the waiting area and took a seat. They were put to the side but didn't know, didn't know why. People began boarding and, and as even more people boarded and time passed, the couple began getting frustrated. They were waiting and didn't know why. After a while, they, they started to get mad. They thought the airline was treating them very poorly by making them wait with no explanation and no time frame. By this time, everyone had boarded the plane except for them. In fact, they were going to be the last ones to board the plane, even though they were one of the first passengers there. And all kinds of things were going through the couple's mind, like what's going on? This is not right. This is not fair. We were here early. Finally, after everybody else was on board the plane, their names were called and they were told they could, they could board. The couple then walked down the jetway and looked at their boarding passes to find their seat assignment, unbeknownst to them that they had been upgraded to first class. And all of a sudden, sorrow became laughter. Sadness became joy. And they now had some pep in their step and some glide in their stride. Because watch now, they had been bumped up from coach to first class. And that's all I came to tell you, Olivet. If you can just wait on the Lord. If you can just be patient with the Lord. He can upgrade you. He can move you if you wait on him from, from coach to first class. If you just wait on him, he can elevate you. If you wait on the Lord, he can move you from good to great. The songwriter, the songwriter said it this way. He said, you can't hurry God. You just got to wait. You got to trust him and give him time. No matter how long it takes. He's a God that you can't hurry. But he'll be there. Don't you worry. And he may not come when you want him to come. But do I have 30 people in here who know when he shows up, he shows up on time. I didn't mean to hold you this long. But I stopped by on my way to heaven to let you know that good things come to those who wait go ahead and look at somebody grab them by the hand hold it real tight don't hold it like a dead fish but hold it like a child of God and say neighbor I don't know what you're going through but if you can just wait on the Lord he'll show up in the nick of time be not dismayed whatever whatever be tied thee how many know God he will take care of you beneath his wings of love abide he will take care of you every day every step of the way is there anybody here can attest this the morning that you found out that God will make a way out of no way he'll turn your midnight in the midday somebody here was sick doctors shook their heads said it was nothing else that they could do but did God step in when you kept waiting when you kept trusting he stepped in and moved spots off of x-rays he touched your body from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet and here you are now praise 
praising the Lord, clapping your hands, running in your seat while you're doing it because you're waiting on God and he showed up in a nick of time. Lean on somebody and say, neighbor, I don't know about you, but I waited and he made a way out of no way. Am I the only one here? But if God did it for you, can I hear you? Can I hear you praise him? Can you help me lift him up? Can you help me magnify his name? Can you help me give him glory? If you know today that he did it for you, get out of these aisles. Meet me at the altar. Come help me preach. If you know he did it, if you're not too cute, not too proud, not too prissy, and not too prayed, if you know he did it, can I hear you today? Say yeah! Say yeah! Yeah! Yes! Yeah! Yeah! somebody he did it for me go ahead and put your arms around him don't be so cute put your arms around him and said I waited for him and he brought me out that's why I can hoop that's why I can dance that's why I can praise him that's why I can lift him up can I hear you hoop say yeah, yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Y'all excuse me here, but I feel my help coming. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Somebody saying, preacher, it don't take all of that. But let me tell you why I shout, why I holler, why I hoop. He woke me up, woke me up this morning. Hoop, can I hear you hoop? Started me on my way. Yeah, yeah, ah, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you wait on it. If you just trust in it, if you hold on to God's unchanging hand, he may not come when you want him to come, but I'm a living witness that he'll show up right on time. I know what it's like to have problems in your life. I know what it's like to wonder if you're right or if you're wrong. But I can stand this morning and tell you today, in every situation, God gave me blessed consolation. And my trials came to make me strong. That's why I can say this morning, through it all, through it all, I've learned to depend on Jesus. And I've learned to trust in God. Oh! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. 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 Wait on it. Wait on it. Wait on it. Trouble in my way. I gotta cry 
got some time. Come on, the door's open. Trouble. I gotta cry sometime. Lay awake at night. But that's all right. Cause I know Jesus. After a while. Trouble in my way. I gotta cry sometime. So much trouble. I gotta cry sometime. Lay awake at night. But that's alright. Cause I know Jesus. After a while. Trouble in my way. Got him on sometime. So much trouble. I got him on sometime. Lay awake at night. But that's alright. Cause I know Jesus. After a while. Stepped in the furnace. Long time ago. Shadrach and Meshach. Abednego, they weren't worried. This I know, cause I know Jesus. After a while, stepped in the furnace. Long time ago, Shadrach and Meshach. Abednego They weren't worried This I know Cause I know Jesus Anybody here know Jesus Do you really, really know Jesus Do you really, really know Jesus Doctor in the sick room, Jesus Lawyer in the courtroom, Jesus. Won't it fix it? Won't it fix it? Fixed it for my father. Fixed it for my mother. Fixed it for my sister. Fixed it for my pastor. Won't it fix it? Won't it fix it, y'all? Won't it fix it? If you wait on him, he'll fix it. He'll fix it. Lay awake at night. But that's all right. Cause I know Jesus. The doors are open. The doors are open. If you don't know him today, you can get to know him. He said, the day that you hear my voice, he said, harden not your heart. Jesus loves you. He cares about you. You can come to him. You can come to him just as you are. You've been trying to, to fix it by yourself, fix it on your own. But you need the Lord to help you. All you have to do is just say, Lord, come into my heart. I want to be saved. The Bible says you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Christ is offered to you this Sunday morning. Why don't you accept it? Secondly, if you're looking for a church home, you say, I am saved, but I'm looking for a church where I can grow in the word of God. We invite you this morning to the Olivet Church where...
Families Fellowship in Fayetteville, where the doors swing open on welcome hinges. If you just want to be a part of this church family by watch care, you're not going to be here but for a limited amount of time, and you just want to partner with the church, we'll be more than happy to pray for you. Why don't you come? He'll fix it. I'm a living witness. He'll fix it. Amen. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there no other Jesus is the way Oh Jesus I know he's the answer for the world today above him there's no other Jesus is the way If you have some questions in the corners of your mind and traces of discouragement, peace you cannot find, reflections of your past. every day there's one thing that I want you to know Jesus is the way one more thing I know you have some mountains that you just see that you can't climb I know the skies are dark and it seemed like the sun won't shine Just in case you don't know I'm here to tell you that the word of God is still true Everything that he promised He's still willing to do Oh Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Oh, Jesus, I know he is the answer for the world today. Yet she is above him, there's no other. Oh, Jesus is the way. Oh, Jesus is the way. I want you to know that Jesus is the way. Yeah. Oh, Jesus is the way. Yeah. Jesus is the way. Well, it's offering time here at the Olivet Church. Remember, God loves a cheerful giver. And we know that a cheerful giver loves God. That means you ought to be excited. You should have a smile on your face. As a matter of fact, that word cheerful in the Bible simply means to be hilarious. In other words, you ought to be just giddy. You ought to be just, I mean, excited when you think about your opportunity to give to the Lord. Think about how much God has given to us. Think about what he has given to us in his son, Jesus Christ. And give him one of the best gifts you have given him in a long time. I want you to sow a seed like you haven't sown 
in a long time because you believe in God for some things that you don't have right now. So as we prepare for our giver's confession, it's right there on your screen. Lord, empower me to bless your kingdom. I love you, Lord, and I support the vision and the visionary of this house. I will give cheerfully and not begrudgingly. All that I have belongs to you. I will honor you with the first fruits. I will be a faithful and committed tither. The devourer is rebuked off my life. Lord, we have built you a house, blessed and bountiful. In Jesus' name, amen. Our scripture today is taken from the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Hello, Olivet family. After this pandemic, I have learned not to rely on my own strength, my own abilities, and certainly not my own wisdom. Our confidence should be in God and God alone, at all times and in all things. The gifts that you place in Olivet Storehouse and the abundant blessings you will receive will be a reminder that you have the confidence in God to trust Him with all your heart, in all things, and in all times. Stay safe, Olivet. Stay healthy. I love you all. To use PushPay, text Olivet GIVE to 77977 and follow the prompts. And don't forget to download the Olivet My Church app, available on Android and iPhone. We're getting ready to go until that time when we will meet again. May his peace be with you. May the Lord watch between me and thee while we are absent one from another. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God I will save you. Be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forevermore. And every child of God said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Everybody say bless, bless, bless.